coming up, a deeper dive into Super Bowl 58. Later on, we've got more information on the Chicago White Sox and their new stadium proposal. I'm Anushka Nair. And I'm William Bazone. All this and so much more. Rambler Sports Locker starts right now. Is it just me, or are you feeling extra lovey today? I mean, I even dressed the part. I can see that, and you know, I think we're doing a little bit different on the vibe. You know, you got pink, I got black. It was Singles Awareness Day yesterday, so had to kind of pour one out, mourn it. So, um, yeah, trying my best here, <laughs> trying well, my best. That's okay, it's matches. <laughs> um, well, anyways, I'm so excited to finally be anchoring for RSL during such a lovely week, and I'm so glad that you're here to help me through it, William. Hey, I'm just doing my best. Now, love might have been in the air this week, but so were our Rambler sports teams. From exciting games to new seasons beginning, here's Elizabeth Winchester with your Rambler Rundown. Thanks, William. Love was definitely in the air, as well as a winning desire. Let's jump into your Rambler Rundown. Last Saturday, the men's basketball team traveled to the nation's capital. They faced off against and defeated George Washington 81-73. On Wednesday, they returned home to play St. Joseph and won 64-59. The women's basketball team faced LaSalle in Philadelphia on February 8th and won 73-39. Three days later, they faced Davidson in Gentile Arena. Despite a comeback in the second half, the Ramblers lost 48-45. to On Wednesday, the Ramblers traveled to St. Louis and took on the Billikens. They fell 77-68. to The men's volleyball team maintained their winning streak when they took on the sixth-ranked Ohio State on February 9th. The Ramblers defeated the Buckeyes 3-2. On Wednesday, they traveled to Romeoville, Illinois and played Lewis University. They swept all three sets, securing their third win in a row. The women's softball season is officially underway. The Ramblers partook in the Spartan Classic, where they played four games. They won 1-0 against Townsend and 3-1 against USC on February 9th. The next day, the softball team won 4-2 against the University of Toledo and 13-5 against South Carolina State. Here's to hoping they will remain undefeated in the Bubbly Invitational this weekend. The Loyola Track and Field competed in the Grand Valley State University meet on February 9th. Jayla Johnson broke her 60-meter hurdle school record twice at the GVSU meet. Johnson clocked 8.65 in the qualifying round before lowering to 8.60 in the final. At the Wisconsin Windy City invite, three Ramblers landed on the women's 3,000 meter top 10 list and five clocked new personal best. Among the top performers were Grace Kuhn with a time of 9.33.18 for six and, Jay and Julia Isham at ninth with a time of 9.38.4. Back to you anchors. Thanks Elizabeth. Now let's hear from Evan what exactly went down during Super Bowl 58 this weekend. Thanks Anushka, the Super Bowl this year was very exciting as the 49ers and Chiefs went head to head in an intense game. While the 49ers were 10 points ahead in the first half, the Chiefs quickly caught up and tied it at 16. The game eventually went into overtime, the second Super Bowl in NFL history to do so. The 49ers took the lead 19-16 due to a field goal by kicker Jake Moody, but the teamwork of Patrick Mahomes and wide receiver Nicole Hardman Jr. propelled the Chiefs to victory. The Kansas City Chiefs repeated as champions with a final score of 25 to 22. They were the first team to win back-to-back -back titles in nearly 20 years. Although there was only one winner, both teams should be recognized for the discipline and ethic it took to make it to the Super Bowl. I hope to see the 49ers back in the Super Bowl soon. Also, in a grand gesture of love, honoring Valentine's Day, Chiefs player Travis Kelsey celebrated his victory by kissing girlfriend Taylor Swift in front of the entire nation. He then threw his hat in the crowd before exiting the stadium. What a great way to end the night. Back to you, William. Thanks, Evan. You're absolutely right. Both teams fought long and hard, and we certainly got our money's worth. Super Bowl 58 was actually the seventh longest game in NFL history. Speaking of time, it could soon be time for a change on the south side of Chicago, with the Sox possibly getting new digs closer to the loop. We'll go to Bella Judice for the story. Thanks, William. If you went to a White Sox game last year, you may have heard the fans chant, sell the team. Well, owner Jerry Reinsdorf must have heard them say, move the team. 
The Sox are interested in moving the ballpark closer to downtown Chicago. The new ballpark would be located in Chicago's newly developed neighborhood called the 78. The park would be 2.5 miles closer to downtown. The Sox lease a guaranteed rate field runs until 2029. So until then, the Sox will continue to play ball there. Fans that live in the nearby neighborhood are heartbroken. The Sox have played in Bridgeport for over 100 years. Now, let's head over to Nate to hear about the men's volleyball game. I'm here at Gentile Arena where your 13th ranked Loyola Ramblers just upset the 6th ranked Ohio State Buckeyes in five sets. Here are your highlights. This matchup had a lot on the line to begin with. Not only were both teams ranked in the top 15, but they shared the MIVA regular season title last year. The Ramblers were led by the usual suspects. Junior outside hitter Parker Van Buren dominated with 17 kills, and sophomore setter Ryan McElligott notched 29 assists. Notably, senior Noah Platfoot of Ohio State recorded an impressive 46 assists. The road to victory was a rocky one for the Ramblers at first. They dropped the first set 25 to 18, but were able to take the second set 25 to 20, and even the match at one. The third set is where the drama really started to begin. It was back and forth set the whole way, with neither team pulling away. The Ramblers battled their way to a 24 to 23 lead with a chance to take the ever so crucial third set, but Ohio State sent it into a deuce. The Ramblers had another chance to take the set at 27 26, but still the Ramblers couldn't finish it off. Ohio State eventually took the set 29 to 27, a heartbreaking loss that put the Ramblers backs against the wall. However, the Ramblers showed their resilience. McElligott had this to say about that moment. The momentum shifted. Even though we lost the set, you could tell that the, whole, the rest of the gym was on our side. Our guys believed that you know, we were going to play two more sets. From there on out, the Ramblers dominated. They took the fourth set 25-14 to, to force a fifth, which they took 15-5. to Gentile Arena erupted as Loyola grabbed their third ranked win in their last four games. Coach Hawks had this to say about the crowd. The, the crowd tonight was awesome. I mean, they were loud and energetic and got our guys going and maybe affected some of what they were doing. So I'm going to convince myself of that. But uh, awesome energy and um, just a fantastic, like, gritty win by our guys. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Nate Keogh. Thanks, Nate. That was a huge win for Ramblers Volleyball. As we know, the Kansas City Chiefs had a huge win as well. Last Sunday, the biggest sports event of the year went down. It was an exciting game. It went into overtime. It had a great halftime show. But most importantly, we got a night of Super Bowl commercials. These are what I think are the top four Super Bowl commercials from this year. Starting from number four, we have Aubrey Plaza's Blast from the Past with Mountain Dew. This company absolutely outdid itself this year by choosing Aubrey Plaza as their celebrity star. The monotone, slightly annoyed voice of our favorite actress repeatedly saying she was having a blast with her Baja Blast was an exciting 30 seconds of my life. The cameo from Nick Offerman really pulled together the whole commercial. At number three, we have Hard Dunkings. Here we see Ben Affleck trying out a career in the pop music industry to impress Jennifer Lopez. While this commercial is focused on Benifer, there are cameos from some of our favorite stars, including Jack Harlow and Tom Brady. At number two, we have Hard Knocks, a Dove Super Bowl film. This commercial blends comedy with an important message from Dove, hashtag keep her confident. Girls need to feel confident in their skin to stay in sports. The winner is Michael Sarah's commercial with Sarah V. Honestly, I just like anything Michael Sarah does. Everything about him is awkward but funny. I think Sarah V had the best celebrity star. They took advantage of a perfect opportunity for some wordplay. Also, it's my favorite moisturizer. Back to you, Anushka. Thanks, Shreya. Honestly, those commercials were all pretty great, but if I had to pick one, it would probably be the Benifer one, because I'm probably the biggest Ben and J-Lo fan there is. Really? That's fascinating. You know, I think I'm with Shreya, though. I think the Michael Sarah commercial, Sarah, Sarah V, those guys clearly yeah. passed Marketing 101. I think it was pretty good. Now, we'll hear from reporter Vanessa Hoxa, who will give us an in-depth look at the best student section in the Atlantic 10, the PAC. He's, he's jacked. 
Loyola student section is the place you want to be on game day. The best of the year. The first just wants to recognize um, Pat student section and support in numbers, our greatest student support we've had since we've been here. Fans line up outside Gentile Arena hours before the games start to support their teams and win exciting giveaways the pack offers. But if you're wondering, what is the pack? And what's going on behind the scenes to get this student section as vibrant as it can be? You're not alone. So oh, come on, I'm gonna cry! In a walk and talk interview, I caught up with Kaylee Aguire, one of the PAC's interns, where we discussed what is the PAC? So the PAC is a marketing internship with Loyola Athletics. Um, it's a group of six of us, and we come up with game day campaigns, giveaways. Um, we just get the student section hype and make sure that we have fans for our biggest games here on campus. Almost after every home game, Drew Valentine, Allison Guth, a lot of the coaches here at Loyola and the staff are talking about the PAC. We're hearing about the PAC, the energy. So what separates the PAC from any other student section in the A-10? So with the pack, we always come together. Um, I think we have one of the best cultures in the A-10. One thing about our student section is we stay loud, we get hype, we get rowdy. Drain! And I think the teams feed off of that and we feed off the team, so it's a back and forth. I think we have some of the best traditions, some of the best chants, and I just like to see every year more and more fans get involved with athletics. So speaking of more and more fans, how do freshmen or transfer students get involved with the pack? So if you go on to Rambler Athletics, there's a bunch of student employment opportunities. They're usually offered and presented in the spring. Um, I just looked for the one that fitted best for me. I applied and I heard back on an interview and I accepted the position. So what do you bring? Um, so for me specifically, what I do is I do a lot of the content on the Instagram. Um, so I'm always picking out photos from game days, um, making graphics, doing scheduling for those and doing the captions as well. And is there anything you want to say to anybody watching to get involved or show up to these games? So guys, um, Loyola Athletics and being a part of the pack is one of the best things about Loyola. It's so much student life opportunities. It's so much fun and I couldn't recommend anything more. Loyola students, you can be a part of the action tomorrow, Saturday, February 17th. The Loyola men's volleyball team will take on Ball State at 5 p.m where you can get your own pair of Chicago flag socks at the pack giveaway. Reporting from Gentile Arena, Vanessa Hoxa, Rambler Sports Locker. Thanks, Vanessa. Gentile wouldn't feel the same now without them. Now we'll hand it over to Natalie for an update on the breaking of gender barriers in the baseball world. Thanks, Anushka. It's been a historic week for breaking gender barriers in the MLB. Jen Paywell could become the Major League's first female umpire, and the Oakland Athletics hired Jenny Kavnar as a first female primary play-by-play -play announcer. Paywell was just given a full-time assignment as a spring training umpire, the first woman to do so since 2007, and is determined to become the first woman to umpire for the Major League in the regular season. She is a former college softball player and has been a minor league umpire since 2016. Prior to the upcoming season, in which nine female umpires will work in the minor leagues, Paywell was one of five women to ever fill this role. Gender barriers in the MLB are not only being broken in the umpire role. Jenny Kavnar is also breaking barriers in the MLB broadcasting space. In 2015, she became the first woman to provide analysis for a National League series on the radio. Kavnar is a five-time Emmy winner and was the pre- and post-game host and backup play-by-play -play announcer for the Colorado Rockies for the last 12 years. Kavnor joins Lisa Byington of the Milwaukee Bucks and Kate Scott of the Philadelphia 76ers as the only women to become full-time play-by-play announcers for men's professional sports teams. Kavnor and Paywell serve as an inspiration to women in sports everywhere. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Natalie King. 
Thanks, Natalie. Very exciting to see some progress being made in MLB. Another team looking to make progress is the Chicago Bears. For the second straight year, they have the pleasure of selecting first overall in the draft, and the big question remains what they'll do with it. Lucas Kim and our reporters break it down on The Ramble. Welcome back to another edition of The Ramble. I'm your host, Lucas Kim, here with Oliver Allen and Bella Judice. We are officially in week one of the NFL offseason. The 2023 script has been set in stone. The players are now rehearsing their lines for next season as we speak. But while everyone is starting choreography for next season, one character may be looking for a new home. Justin Fields has been the guy for Chicago since they drafted him in 2021. But a new rumor is swirling about USC Trojan Caleb Williams, who some believe is headed to the Windy City to replace Fields. So my question today is, will Caleb Williams be replacing Justin Fields at quarterback for the Bears? Oliver, let's hear your thoughts on this rumor. What I think that the Bears should do is that they should trade their number one overall pick and maybe try to get some kind of star receiver. Oh, wait, they already did that. They did that last year. They traded the number one overall pick and got DJ Moore who had an excellent season. Good. It very much so reminded me of when the Bills, they have a rookie quarterback with excellent talent, and then they, he struggles a little bit his rookie mm -hmm. year. He does. They trade for a star receiver, and he takes that huge leap forward. That just did not happen with Justin Fields. They trade for a star receiver. They spent a lot of money on this team, and he basically did what he did last year while also being injured. I like Justin Fields. I do believe that the situation in Chicago hasn't been the best for him, but I just think with a talent like Caleb Williams, you cannot pass on that for someone like Justin Fields, who in his two and a half years of starting has not shown the signs. Well, I guess Caleb Williams is a Heisman Trophy winner, so he has one up on uh, Justin Fields in college. Bella, what do you think? First of all, Oliver, I love the sass you started off with. That was so funny. Um, <laughs> okay. What do I think they'll do? I think they're going to go for Caleb Williams. What do I want them to do? I would love to see Justin Fields stay in Chicago. I think that he's had a horrible situation. The offensive line here is not very good, and I'd like to see them get some more weapons for Justin Fields and really develop him to be a young star. I think he's really talented. I think that he can uh, run crazy it would just be nice to see the Bears actually try to develop a player instead of just getting rid of them and going back to the draft because I feel like it's always the same old thing with the Bears. It's um, We're going to try it for like a year, and if it doesn't work, then just kind of throw him away. So he's been through several offensive coordinators, so it would be nice to see him just be in a stable environment. Um, but that's just my opinion. Well, what do you think the problem is for Justin Fields? Is it his coaches? Do you think it's the receivers? Is it, is it the defense? I mean, he's a very agile player, really great in college. I mean, what, what's, what's the problem? Is he scared? I mean, I think that might be part of it. Honestly, I'm not going to come on here to just bash on Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. I think he's a great talent, and I think in the right scheme, he could really excel. But mm -hmm. I just feel like when the Bears have the third most cap space in the NFL and a generational talent in Caleb Williams, you just can't pass on that. So I, I don't have a ton against Fields. I think he makes some turnover-worthy throws. I think sometimes he holds on to the football too long. I just think that when you have a guy like Caleb Williams in comparison to Justin Fields who just hasn't really clicked yet, I, I think you have to take Caleb Williams. Well, I mean, you never know. This could be a situation like it was in San Francisco in 2021. They took Trey Lance uh, to replace Garoppolo, but I mean, Look at where Trey Lance is now. He's a third-string quarterback for the Cowboys. Yeah. And uh, do you think this might be one of those situations again where, you know, they take Caleb Williams, he's the next stud, um, you know, and Justin Fields, you know, it ends up being – a starter for another team maybe do you think he'll start I feel like you just never know with the NFL draft I mean we look at Patrick Mahomes he was drafted in the third round we have uh, Brock Purdy who was the last pick of the NFL draft I I feel like we we just don't know we haven't seen him play in the NFL people when they get onto an NFL field play completely different than when they did in college so it'll be just a waiting game and by the way when you said what's wrong with the Bears with Justin Fields what isn't wrong with the Bears the front <laughs> office the run game like everything like of course he's not going to develop into a good quarterback everything is wrong with the Bears well well we'll see yeah. also Patrick Mahomes did he get drafted in the he was a first round first he was round a first sorry later first round, later later first round. round. Mid to late my bad round. you're right later but first he wasn't Brock Birdie though yeah Brock Birdie was last pick Brock Birdie my anyways bad. well it looks like we're gonna have to keep up with the news and find out what's gonna happen in the off season thank you very much for tuning in and let's toss it back to our anchors 
Thanks everyone, and before we go, we want to take a moment to talk about a tragedy that occurred in downtown Kansas City Wednesday afternoon. Three suspects have been detained for opening fire at the conclusion of the Chiefs' Super Bowl parade. At the time of our recording, one person has died and over 20 people have been injured. The investigation remains ongoing, and we mourn all those impacted by this terrible event. Such a heartfelt message, William. Thank you. With that, that wraps up this episode of Rambler Sports Locker. To stay up to date on all things Rambler Sports, be sure to follow us on X, TikTok, and Instagram at Loyola RSL, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From all of us here at Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Anushka Nair. And I'm William Bazone. We'll see you next week, and don't forget to turn off the lights.